So friends, what are the top five books for thinkers? Friends, I have been making a list of books for thinkers. These books are full of knowledge, questions, analysis, great perspective. They force you to think about such lot of things in life. Last week I reviewed number five book on the list, which is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Today I'm going to evaluate number four book, 24 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. In this book, he covers a lot of issues which we are facing in 21st century. He gives his perspective, forces you to think about these issues from new angles, new dimensions, new perspective. So I'll cover some three main subjects which I liked about the book. First, let's come to technology. As we know, artificial intelligence and robotics are making great progress. So question is, how our job will look like after 10 years? Will our kids will have a job? There are two views. One view is technology will create a lot of new jobs. For example, American Army is operating drones. For drones, it need 50 people to operate it. It need people to identify the target, find the location, analyze the information, operate it, maintain it. So yes, there are there will be new jobs created, but there will be jobs that will be eliminated at the same time. With self-driving cars and vehicles, you would not need drivers. You would not need need traffic control policemen. So there will be jobs eliminated at the same time. And also, you cannot take some guy working at the grocery and put him in charge of operating a drone you need special skills. So there would be some people without proper pay, proper work, proper salary. So government has to come with the universal pay. In universal pay, everybody gets some money to take care of their expenses. I have some friends who are living on the retirement funds of their parents. They get limited monthly allowances. They have no ambition, but they are very, very happy. So in the future, these people who are getting minimum salary from government, but they are very happy, are going to be the role model citizens. Logarithms are getting better at making decisions than human. We human, we make decision. We don't make decision rationally. It's not, uh, we are not making decision out of free will. All intellectuals, they talk about people's free will, but how we make decisions? We just make decision on instant. Thousands of neurons are working for us to take a decision. Is my life in danger? Is it give, going to give me pleasure? So we take decision based on our experiences, our how our brain is working, and the modern science is hacking into that. So. So big companies are collecting so much data, what we are searching, what, what are our hobbies. They have so much data collecting that these algorithms can better decision than uh, us. Uh, another interesting point he brings out in the book is ethics. If you see two pedestrians walking on the road, should you drive in the opposite lane and put your and your family life in danger? That's what ethics come. A lot of self-driving companies are fighting with the ethics. If they have to make a decision between pedestrian life versus driver life, whose life they should save? Pe he comes with a funny logic that a lot of people were given option. If They were asked two questions. If you see pedestrian, should you save their pedestrian life and put your life in danger. Everybody said yes. When it come, came to buying the car, they prefer to buy a car which saves driver life than pedestrian life. If you are going to buy a self-driving car, read the ethic policy. But if puppy comes and this self-driving car puts you in opposite lane, don't get me wrong, I love puppies, but putting a life of six to eight people to save one puppy, 
I don't know. Second interesting chapter was on terrorism. He asked a very good question. If you, he provides some data, how many people terrorists have killed? As compared to terrorists, more people have died in road accidents. More people has been killed by diabetes or other diseases. But why we are so scared of terrorists? Why we overreact to terrorists? He talks about 911. Everybody remembers Twin Towers were blown. But nobody remembers Pentagon was blown. Everybody is uh, written, everybody's image or oh, two towers were broken. But what was our response? Spending trillion dollar to wage a war on terrorists is justified. He was asking that question. He mentions that terrorists are desperate people. They cannot wage war on the state. What they do can do is they put up some spectacular terrorist attack on in some localized place and they hope that the government will overreact. Should you overreact? Should you should your response should be objective, calculated and appropriate? Lot of time our response is whenever terrorists kill, kill some ten people on the bus we justify our overreaction. Oh my God, these terrorists are going to get hold of nuclear weapons tomorrow. The question he asks is, just because terrorists can get nuclear weapons in the future, should you react to killing of 10 people on a bus same way as the terrorists detonating nuclear weapons? The question he asks, does our fear towards terrorism is justified? Is our reaction, our government reaction is justified? We are not holding government for pandemic. So many people killed. We are not asking government, can it prevent this kind of action in the future? But when some terrorism act, when some terrorist act happens, we expect our state to protect us, wage a war, overreact. The th third great chapter from the book is about the education. 10, 20 years back, we knew, okay, what our son is going to be. A soldier's soldier knew his son is going to be a soldier. A farmer knew his son is going to be a farmer. No automation taking over. We are not sure how our education should be for the future. He brings a nice point that uh, future education maybe should teach people how to think critically, how to communicate, how to coordinate with other human beings. I, I remember I went to one conference and in which uh, Microsoft CEO Nadella said, okay, automation, self-driving car may save you $5,000. Where are you are going to spend? You're going to take vacation. There could be opportunities in hospitality industry. Uh, maybe our education should focus also on the soft skills, not only just the technical skills. So friends, it's a great book for the thinkers. Every chapter has great information, great question, great analysis. Highly, highly recommend it. So friends, if you like your, my video, like it, share it and subscribe to my channel for your regular updates. Connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter, especially LinkedIn. If you like small summaries of the video, I will be posting a lot of small summaries of the, of the video on LinkedIn.